All right, then there are constraints. Constraints are basically restricting the possible actions that can be performed. Now, constraints are very often used when it comes to preventing users from making mistakes, hopefully from making critical mistakes. All right, so it helps prevent the user from selecting incorrect options. Now, we actually deal with constraints all the time. Right, one of the oldest examples is just a key, you know, your house key. What happens if you try to put it in upside down? It, it won't work, so we just kind of flip it. All right, so that is an example of a constraint. And in digital systems, we also have constraints all the time. So these days when you are on Windows and when you're on a Mac and you go to delete a file, does it immediately get deleted? No, what happens to it? It stays on the hard drive and it kind of just moves the pointer over to the trash with the recycle bin. Why do you think that now happens as opposed to just deleting it? Because people make mistakes. So in that case, if you actually want to delete it, remember it's actually deleting the pointer, what do you have to do? Yeah, so you can restore from the trash, but you need to get rid of it in the trash. <coughs> that gets rid of the, the pointer. So it's an extra step. So that would be an example of a simple constraint. In general, you cannot just delete a file. If you actually want to delete it, you actually need to take additional steps. This is for the safety of your data. Makes sense, right? Now, are there sometimes constraints that users think is, a, users think is not such a good idea that developers do think is a good idea? Yes, there are. Can you think of any examples? Before I give you my most irritating one for me. Windows Vista had something called user access control. That, that was the worst thing I've ever experienced. Oh, yes, our user access control. I actually showed that video in this class. Have I showed it yet? No? Let me see. Did I include that in this lecture? No. It's in a lecture later on. Our famous user access control. What happens when you try to do anything? You change settings. It asks for permission. It asks for permission. How many times does it ask for permission? Every time. How many times do you then want to pick up your computer and throw it out the window? Every time. What did they do in subsequent releases of Windows? They got rid of it and just mask it as Windows 7. They got rid of it and mask it as Windows 7. They decided to be nice to their users and change the way they do that constraint. So they were trying to think of safety, right? That's a good thing. But you can argue that was overkill. Right? It became really irritating. Just as one of your fellow students said a little bit earlier, can it become too much? Absolutely it can. So you need to be very, very careful when you are using constraints because you can go too far. As IT people, we think things such as, well, I have to safeguard the data. I have to protect the user from himself or herself. But you still have to be very, very careful. Because a lot of times we try to protect users that it may be a minority and the majority now are revolting. Like with Windows Vista. Who liked Windows Vista? It was all right after a while. It was all right after a while. Did you like it or you're saying, I got it, I really hated it? I know, I liked it. You liked it? So, as you can see, most people did it. It's fabulous that you did. But the majority, you know, there were a lot of companies out there that just didn't buy Vista. They waited until Windows 7 came out, came, came out, came around. They're like, yeah, no. Some of, some of them even downgraded to XP. Yes, there were actually a lot of people, both individuals and companies, that they, they, went, they went into Vista and they're like, this is no. And they downgraded back to XP. People loved XP. So let's look at... An example. How many of you know what this is? 
It's the back of a computer. It's quite different from what we have these days, right? All right, so back then, these were our plugs for our keyboard and our mice. They look the same, don't they? Yep. Here you have some icons. One shows a keyboard, the other shows a mouse. Now, here's my question to you. Which one do you plug the keyboard in and which one do you plug the mouse into? Okay, so some of you think the keyboard is on the bottom and the mouse goes on the top. Is there anyone who disagrees? So mouse on the top, keyboard on. Is there anyone who, who thinks that this may be telling us that the mouse goes on the bottom and the keyboard goes on the top? It could be. It could be. So especially someone who doesn't know anything about computers, they get their nice new, well, I guess back then, nice new computer. Now it's the, uh, and, and their nice antique computer. And they're trying to plug in their keyboard and mouse. It's going to be a little difficult for them to figure it out. What are some changes that we could make to this to make it better? Put it like should have colors around. around the 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 around they use the color on the actual mouse and keyboard icon at the bottom. They could have put that same color around the icon. Put the icon. Put the colors to the side. All right. So. You could have put the colors, like put a circle around the colors. That's one thing I heard. The other thing I heard was you could put the icons actually next to the port that it needs to be used in. Those are two great ideas. Anyone think of anything else? Those are the two I really am looking for. Go wireless. Go wireless. <laughs> that would be awesome, except we didn't have wireless back then. But that actually is a great idea. I love wireless stuff. I don't have my children and my cats now playing with it as I'm trying to work. So you can have these two options that would not be that difficult to implement. If this cost them an additional half a penny, I'd be surprised. But what do you think happened when an IT person was designing this? They didn't think about the common user. To them, it was just obvious. Now, this doesn't mean that this designer was dumb in any way. In fact, we know IT people are very smart. But you're focused on accomplishing your goal, and it made sense to them. To them, it was common sense. Not necessarily common sense to the majority of users. 